So let's look again at the correspondence problem, which is the most difficult part of stereo vision. So for every point in the left image, there are many possible matches in the right image. And the problem is difficult because the points look similar, so we have ambiguous matches. One way to help solve this is to use the known geometry of the cameras to help limit the search for matches. And the most important constraint is the epipolar constraint, meaning that we can limit the search for a match to be along a line in the other image. We don't have to search the entire image. And this shows uh, how that's true. So if I have a left and right camera, they're aligned here. Um, I know the centers of the two cameras, C1 and C2. Let's say I see a point in P1 in one image. So I know that the point, the 3D point, must lie along this ray here. Well, that, those three points form a plane, and the intersection of that plane with the image plane is a line called the epipolar line. So um, I can calculate that line in the other image, and I know that the projection of the point must lie along that line in the other image. So instead of searching the entire image, I just have to search along that line. And you can also do this if the cameras are not aligned. You still have this plane formed by the camera centers and your point in the image. And so you can calculate the epipolar line in the other image and search along that. Um, so you can design uh, efficient algorithms to search horizontally. And if you don't have aligned cameras, it might be better to um, warp the images so that they are effectively aligned. So this is this shows an example of taking two stereo images not aligned and rotating and warping them so that effectively the epipolar lines are parallel. Okay, so given even using that epipolar constraint, we still have ambiguous matches. And you might see a case of um, no texture or a very repetitive texture as giving problems. So the problem is under constrained. There's no uh, unique answer to this. So the only way we can solve this is to impose assumptions about the real world, things that are usually true but might be occasionally false. So these are heuristics. So let's take a look at these that we can use. So one heuristic is that we could limit the search for disparities to within certain limits. So for example, instead of searching, if I see a point in the left image, instead of searching um, all possible disparities in the right image, I could search only for a small range. So this effectively limits the range of points that I can, I can uh, detect. But that might be OK, depending on the application. Certainly, it's how human beings do it. Appearance. We um, we can assume that the features have similar experience appearance in the left and right images. Um, you know, a corner in this image looks like a corner in this image, and so forth. Um, but occasionally, that's violated in the real world, especially for uh, surfaces that are not uh, this matte, diffuse, reflective, uh, such as specular reflection, like this. We look at patterns in the water here; they look very different in the two images. Uh, uniqueness, we assume that a point in the left image can have at most one match in the right image. That's pretty much always true, except you might have a uh, transparent surface, for example, where you can see multiple points um, through a single image point. An ordering constraint, we can say that the features should be in the same left to right order in each image. Uh, what does that mean? So if I have, let's say, points A, B, C, here's my two cameras, that I'm going to see those two point, those three points in the same order A, B, C in the left and right images. Um, that's violated, though, if you have uh, a very large difference in depth between those points. So here's an example where, let's say, um, A, uh, B, C um, 
might be slightly uh, in different order like this. So this might be, for example, B, A, C or something. So um, it depends on you know the scenes we're looking at and the amount of depth range that we can tolerate. Another one commonly used is smoothness, that we assume that objects have mostly smooth surfaces, meaning that disparities should vary smoothly. Um, that's usually true in the real world, certainly for man-made objects, except for places where you have depth discontinuities, and then you don't have smoothness at those points. Um, two general methods people use for finding correspondences are correlation approaches, where we match image patches using uh, correlation type methods. This assumes only a translational difference between the two patches, which is a good assumption if the patch only covers a single surface. And it works well for scenes with lots of texture. Another type of approach is uh, based on matching discrete features such as edges, lines, or corners. So this gives a, only a sparse reconstruction. Of course, we can interpolate a smooth surface uh, between the points that we have estimated. And this might be better for scenes with little texture. A lot of uh, man-made objects are like this. So let's just look at the correlation approach. Um, we extract a patch from the left image. We search for a match along the epipolar line in the right image and take the point where we have the, uh, the peak in the correlation score. So here's a program in MATLAB that does this matching. So the only constraint this uses is the epipolar line constraint. It, it basically is only going to look for uh, the match along horizontal lines, plus or minus a little bit of, of vertical. So it, it will extract a uh, template from the left at various positions and search um, an area in the right image um, and find the peak score in the correlation score. And it will, uh, this is the loop that goes through the image, extracts patches and matches them, keeps the match if the score is above a threshold, and then plots it when it's done. So let me just run that. Well, I won't run it, I'll just show the results. So these images show the points in the left and right that were matched and this is the surface, um, I'm sorry, the, the disparity values that were calculated. So you can kind of see the shape of the object. Uh, there are some mismatches you can see down here. So there, no other, I didn't use any smoothness constraints or ordering constraints or anything like that, just the epipolar constraint here. So just a few notes on, on this type of approach. There is a trade-off in window size. Um, larger windows are more unique to be matched, but smaller windows are less likely to cross discontinuities. And instead of using cross-correlation, which I did, you can also use sum of square differences or sum of absolute differences. And as I mentioned before, there's a nice website that has a lot of information about stereo and there are commercial systems such as this point gray.